Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this channel named Geeks for Geeks for Geek School. Thank you very much for joining me at this time in this tutorial. So I have come up with again a very amazing lecture, and it is going to be on a runner game that we will develop uh, using amazingly beautiful Pygame module. So we'll be using uh, Python coding for developing this game, and let's dive into the platform and start. Uh, the coding part. So the first thing that I would like to do is uh, let's import this module pygame okay that we require for our game and the next thing we need to do is we need to initiate the package. So that's the code with the help of which we can initiate this pygame package. Now we require a screen on which we can get everything. You know we can get our players, we can get the floor on which our player will be running right so some stuff like that we can get so uh, for drawing the screen we are going to make use of the same concept that is let's have a variable and in this variable let's have uh, this pygame dot display dot set underscore mode so that's the function using which you can uh, create a screen and you can put it in a variable like the way i have done over here Fine, so set mode, uh, you can pass the parameters, you know, the dimensions of your window as a parameter to this function. Suppose you want to have a window of 800, 800 wide width and you want to have its height as 400 pixels. So simply pass these two things as parameters to the set mode function. Now the moment you will run this code, so that's what you will get to see. So for a moment of second or two, you will see a window which will automatically go away. Right. Now, if you want that window to stay for a longer period, period of time. So what you can do, you can define uh, some condition or you can put a loop over here. For example, I generally use this while loop. You guys know very well. So that's the main game loop, right? Now inside this, we can simply define a command uh, for checking the event which will occur during the during the time when the game will be in running mode. So this for loop can be used for doing the same. So for event in uh, for getting the events, right? For fetching the events, we can simply use this pygame dot event dot get function. So that's the function which is going to help us in capturing all the event and bringing all the event to us. Now we can check if the event dot game, right? Sorry, if the event dot type. So if the type of the event is equal to equal to pi game dot quit, you know this event will take place when the user will hit the cross button which is uh, there right on the top of uh, the display window. You know the way we have a cross button over here, in the same way uh, we have a cross button on the top of that display window also on which our game we will see. So in order to check whether the user has clicked that button or not, we can use this event dot type and simply we can you know put a colon here and let's now do this thing so if this event dot type is equal to pi game dot quick quit if this uh, uh, what we call it condition is true then what should happen that's what i would like to define over here so i would like to quit the game i would like my game to get close so pi game dot quit we can put here now you know besides this if you want to uh, suppose you want to have uh, you want to close everything whatever uh, you know is going to run when you will build this game on python you want something like that so what you can do you can define you can import this package sys also right so if with this, you will be able to uh, get this function also, that is exit function. Fine. So now, whatever will be running, you know, when you will build the game on Python, 
so it will automatically get closed fine so the window as well as the operations which are running behind the window at the back end they all will get closed and we will uh, come back on this coding section let me just run the game and show the output to you guys so i'm building it on python let's see what's going to happen so we are able to see this window here and it is not getting closed automatically itself now in order to close this window what we can do we can simply hit this cross button see how easy it is for us to uh, you know close the window so we can manually now control the uh, window ourselves fine so that's what uh, this code is doing for us now next thing that i would like to do is i would like to define the speed of the game with what speed my game should run right so if you want to have a control on the speed section you can make use of the clock uh, code right there is a function named clock with the help of which you can define the fps frames per second rate of frames per second you know the rate at which your frames should get executed if you want to have a control over that if you want to define a control over that thing so you can make use of the clock function simply use this variable clock or you can use some other variable also it is totally your call but you know mostly uh, you will see this variable only in the games in the pi pi game games so we can now access the clock function and remember this thing the uh, c of this clock function is in capital fine you have to put it in capital so that's how you can get the clock function from this uh, time thing of pi game module now in order to have a, 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 you know check on this frame rate per second you can simply put a code over here which is clock dot tick fine now if suppose you want to you want the platform to execute one frame in uh, let's say 0 0.06 second so you know that's 0 0.6 seconds so that's what you can put here now your game will run in in a very smooth way you will be able to see uh, the animation also going on in the in a very smooth way so now if i will run the game you will not be able to see the changes because we have not defined any such animation uh, yet on this game window the only thing which will be visible to you is a black window right okay so i'm closing it but before closing the window i would like to uh, uh, have your attention on this caption which is getting reflected over here so it's pi game window which we are able to see right on the top of this window if suppose you want to change this uh, uh, caption how you will do that so it's very simple i have told you about it in the previous game also let me just help you guys with the code again so we can make use of this function pi game dot display dot set underscore caption fine and here you can pass the uh, you know name of the image which you want to see sorry you you can pass the name as a parameter which you want to see getting reflected right on the top of the window as caption so it's a uh, running game so i am putting here running game by god okay or uh, let me put uh the company's name so gfg now if i will run this code so i will be able to see everything what i have passed here as a parameter to this set function set caption function so running game by gfg isn't it amazing it is right so let me just close this window now i would like to introduce to you guys the concept of surfaces see the window which you are able to see over here it's the display window so you can have only one display window for one game fine now if suppose you want to create some more windows so what you can do you can make use of surfaces so there is a thing called surface 
which is pretty much similar to this display window right but what happens if suppose you have five different characters uh, you want to bring on this display window so for each one of them you can have a separate surface so you'll have to put the object on that surface and after that you need to you have to bring that surface on this display window so that's how that surface helps us in bringing the objects we want to see on this display window uh, uh, and getting them reflected over here on the top of it right so surface are also the dis uh, they are also kind of display windows but you can create you can have more than uh, one surfaces on a, a particular display window but for a particular game you cannot have more than one display window remember this thing so let me just tell let me just show you how can you create a surface i have used the same concept on in the previous lectures also uh, you know i uh, if you remember i created this flappy bird game so it looks something like this let me just show it to you right so here also you know i have used the uh, uh, the surface concept in order to bring all the things which you are able to see over here right now so i use the surface concept and then i use that uh, blit function so blit stands for block trans uh, block image transfer right so that uh, function can be used for getting everything for fetching all the surfaces and getting them reflected on the display window if you don't know about this concept let me explain it to you again so we can simply have a variable here let's say test underscore surface is the variable in which i would like to create a surface now how can we create a surface we can simply put this code pygame and you know we can fetch this function surface so it's a function you can use for uh, uh, creating a surface fine now comes the dimensions so the way we have passed a tuple value over here for to the set mode function you know with, with, with the help of this we are actually uh, defining the dimensions of our display window similarly uh, to the surface function also we need to pass a tuple and let's define let's have a surface of 100 by 200 okay now if i will if i want to fill a color right inside my surface so let's do that what we can do because we have saved this surface in this variable so we can call this variable first like this and then we can use this fill function if you remember that, that that's a function you can use for filling something filling a color inside a particular object or surface so I would like to see uh, a red surface getting reflected on my window. Now if I will run this code, it will not give me any error. Neither it will show me any kind of surface on this display window. You guys know why? Because, uh, you know, I haven't called this surface yet inside this main loop, which is actually creating the frames, you know, different frames uh, uh, of my games of my game right so how to do that we can make use of screen dot blit absolutely right so we can make use of this simple code screen dot blit and we can simply pass uh, the variable in which we have saved the surface as a parameter to it now besides this you know if you will simply pass it like this and you will run the code let's see what's going to happen so you will get an error why you why we are getting this error because it needs one more argument and that argument is we haven't passed the uh, coordinates of the point where we would where we would like to see the surface getting reflected right so i would like to see it getting reflected at this point 0 comma 0 now if you will run the code you will definitely be able to see the red color window why is it not visible to us okay let me just change the coordinates to 100 and 200 if i will do it like this will it be possible for me to see the red window or not okay so it's not visible to us now we'll have to find out 
why we are not able to see this surface screen dot blade this is perfectly fine uh, okay we haven't we haven't defined that update function yet so there is a thing called there is a function named update which with which we can uh, get the display screen updated on regular basis so we haven't defined that maybe that's a reason why we are not able to see this uh, red surface on our display window so that's the way you can call this update function okay and let me just change this to 0 comma 0 again now if i will run my code let's see what's gonna happen so i am able to see this uh, uh, red color surface getting reflected on my window isn't it amazing i hope you have understood the concept right now if you want to suppose change its position suppose you want to get to uh, you want to see it somewhere over here so you can change the coordinates if you'll change it to if i'll change it to, to 100 by 200 let's see what's gonna happen so see the direction the position of this block has changed earlier it was getting reflected over here and now we are able to see it here at this position so it's amazing fine now uh, what i am doing i see i don't want the surface to be there on my display window i would like to now impo i i, I want to see a floor i want to see a sprite a, a, a character with which we can play the game so that's what i would like to define now what i can do i can simply uh, come up over here and sorry uh, test surface do we need to remove it or not let's do one thing let's first put a name of a variable here so i would first like to import a, a sky as a background on my play uh, on my game window so pi game dot image i already i have already downloaded all the images on my on the, in the folder in which i have saved this runner dot py file let me just show you what all things we'll be needing for this game so i need to come inside this user's name folder gaurav then I think app data is the one we need to visit, right? App data is the name of the folder we need to visit local, and then here we can simply uh, come inside this programs Python, Python, and here is the here are all the files we'll be using. So you know, I would like to see the sky I have downloaded. Uh, as a background on my display window the complete name of this image is because it's a png image so uh, we'll be using sky.png for fetching it on uh, the display window so dot. i hope you remember this load function right we made use of it several times in the previous lectures also so this can be used for pulling the image and loading the same uh, in a variable right so what is the name of the image the name of the image is sky and the complete name is uh, sky.png so we need to mention the extension of the file also with which we have saved the file and besides that we would like to have this convert function also so what this will do it will convert this image in such a form that it will not put uh, a lot of load on the game right so convert function we can use and then we can have a separate variable for the ground image so i would like to have ground dot surface is equal to we are going to make use of the same code the only thing which we'll change in this code i have copied and pasted here is the name of the image so the name with which i saved the ground image is ground.png right so it's very simple you all will if you will try definitely you will be able to get the desired output now if i will run this game i will not be able to see the surface or the uh, you know the either of these surfaces on this display window you know why because uh, i haven't called them in this while loop that's the main loop right so i haven't called them yet inside it 
that is the reason we are not able to see any of these two surfaces on our game window. So what I am doing, I'm removing this line of code because we don't require the uh, test surface anymore. We can simply come down here and we can change this test surface to what? We can change it to, uh, let's say sky surface and I would like to see it getting reflected at this point, 0 comma 0. Fine. Similarly, we can use the same code for calling the ground image also on our game, on, on our display window. So we'll have to change it to ground ground underscore surface right and we can change the coordinates to 0 comma 300 now it's time for us to call the uh, okay let's let's first run this code and see what is the output it will give us so that's beautiful see uh, that's the sky and it's a beautiful floor which we are able to see over here so it's looking amazing it's really looking very beautiful right okay now it's time for us to, uh, you know, write something on the top of the sky. So if you want to, uh, you know, write something or if you want to uh, see some text getting reflected on the top of the display window, so you can make use of uh, the same code, you know, the way we have used this load function for loading the image in the surface. And then we use this split function for getting the surfaces reflected on our display window in the same way we can get the text saved in a variable first and then we can call it in the main variable so let's do that first of all i would like to fetch the font in which you know uh, which i would like to apply on the text i would like to see on the game dis display window so you know that's the way we can pull the font so font dot font is the function through which you can pull the tft file in which the font uh, i have saved so pixel type you know that's the uh, file in which i have saved the required font i would be using for my text so i can simply call it like this pixel what is the full name it is pixel type so pixel type and then we need to put this ttf it's a ttf file right and I need to enclose it in between inside the double single inverted commas and let's convert it into a form which can uh, make our game lighter right so it is not going to put now too much of load on our game because we have converted it into a form which is uh, uh, lighter okay uh, now it's time for us to uh, use the render function so what we can do, we can use another variable, let's say text surface. Okay, it is for put, uh, defining the text on the game window. And simple, similar, uh, simply we can put this test underscore font and we can call this render function which uses three parameters. So the first parameter is the text we want to see getting reflected on our game window. I would like to see my game getting reflected on the top of my game window. Secondly, I would not like to give it a fancy look. So that's the reason I would, I'm, I've passed false here, right? And then black, the color in which I would like to see my text getting reflected. So I would like to see it in black. That's the reason I have passed black here. If you want to see it in some other color, you can pass the name of the color over here as a parameter, as a third parameter to this render function. So now the only thing which we are left with is uh, calling this text on our game window. So we can simply copy this entire code. We can put it here and of variable in which we have saved the font we can copy it from here and we can simply place it over here right let's let me now run this code and see what's going to happen so will we, we will be able to see the text not okay it's showing us an error why is it so function takes exactly two arguments is it so uh, what is missing here Okay, I haven't passed the font size. That's absolutely right. You need to pass font size also, right? Uh, let me now run this game and 
still we are able to still uh, this error is coming pygame dot font dot font object has no attribute okay why it is showing us this error so i have used this test font pygame dot font this is perfectly fine why are we getting this error then pygame dot font dot font okay then pixel type uh, dot ttf and then we passed this 50 over here why are we getting this error then let me just check it uh, check this error again so it is saying that uh, pygame dot font dot font has object has no attribute convert okay so it is not able to okay 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 i think i need not to use this with this font because obviously it is not going to put any kind of load on our game let me now run this code and see what's gonna happen so we can see this my game getting reflected on our display window so finally we are able to see it over here now it's time for us to change its position suppose if i want to see it getting reflected somewhere on the top over here so i need to come down and i need to change these coordinates you know which i have passed as a parameter over here to the split function so let's do that uh if i want to get it reflected on the top i can pass something like this i think now we'll be able to get a very good output yes we are able to see it getting reflected in the center and right on the top so it is looking amazing right now right so that's what i wanted to tell you in this lecture we are done with uh, you know uh, getting this text on our game window we are done with defining an amazingly beautiful background for our game the next thing that we'll be doing is uh, we'll be bringing our main character we'll then put some add some animations to our game right and this game uh, has six different parts which we will shoot on six different days right so today uh, is today you enjoyed this first part right and i hope to see you in the next lecture too in which i am going to show you the second part of this game how you can code uh, animations how you can add animations to your game and make it look more appealing that's what we are going to do in the next lecture so please be there and in case you come across any issue while coding this game on your own do let me know about the same in the comment section so that I can help you in resolving the issue. This is it from my side. I hope you guys enjoyed this lecture a lot. Thank you very much for being there with me in this tutorial. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye everyone and take care. Stay well.